mean, obviously, uh, the shuffle occurred the middle of July, uh, and uh, we've been busy doing a lot of briefings on the science and technology uh, in FedNor. I obviously uh, considered it a top priority to take care of some business that uh, uh, was there, and as the new minister, I considered it a priority to uh, to look after that uh, uh, business. I'd had some discussions with Jay, and we uh, we identified this as a priority that we needed to get out on my first official tour in my capacity. Uh, uh, as a minister outside of the Great Kenora Riding, and so uh, I appreciate Jay's uh, uh, cooperation and consultation in those regards. There's been a lot of chatter. Um, Tony Clement held the uh, the portfolio for a while. A lot of people didn't consider him a northerner, um, whereas they do you. What do you bring to this portfolio that is different? Well, first of all, um, I, I wouldn't get into that debate. These are big shoes to fill. Minister Clement was the uh, minister for uh, the longest serving minister for Fednor, in fact. Uh, he was a tremendous leader in these regards, and he gave me every opportunity as a parliamentary secretary uh, to uh, grow comfortable with uh, the spe specificities of the file. Uh, one of the hallmarks of Minister Clement was his consultation in the Northern Ontario Caucus with his colleagues, uh, and uh, we've made great strides in those regards. Uh, with respect to the future, we're going to build on those successes and we want to always identify areas that we can improve on uh, and we think we're well positioned out of this uh, that Minister's office uh, to address uh, issues that we hear from stakeholders that uh, can be improved upon. What are you hearing today and, and what course of action are you taking? Well, you know, with the media, um, it goes like this. It's Believe it or not, pause for effect, it's almost all good news. Um, the, there are some things that we want to work on. Uh, obviously, I mentioned it in my speech that we're going to make best efforts to uh, uh, improve some of the, the timelines and turnarounds for uh, applications. Uh, we reserve the right to do a thorough due diligence. As Jay rightly identified, we have a fantastic team uh, of folks working all across Northern Ontario. We're talking a region um, the size of uh, the good, uh, a good portion of Europe. Uh, they have an incredible network with stakeholders. Uh, colleges, universities, skills training and, and uh, initiatives and as well the private sector and so uh, we want to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. After all this is taxpayer money that's going out. Uh, we think when 30 new students are going to be hired in private sector industries and supported through the FedNor initiative plan, uh, we think when we're growing technology and innovation in sectors that are relevant to our region and some that are, uh, are burgeoning uh, we're going to be in a good position moving forward. How do you support those interns after? Because FedNor, it, it's great that you invest in them, but it's after. They've done their year's term or their month's term, uh, you know, but there's no job at the end of it. Well, I know a little bit about that. I mean, after 13 years of university myself, I can appreciate that feeling that you have when you leave uh, college or university and you're looking for that first job. I think that the strength of this program is that uh, FedNor uh, interns get an opportunity to get paid, apply the knowledge that they learned at their college and university. Uh, and again, more good news for you folks. Uh, we track our FedNor uh, interns. Uh, it's my understanding that as many as at uh, different years, but quite recently as many as 85% are often retained by the people that they intern for. Uh, and that the uh, residual percentage are for, for people who simply gained a valuable experience with uh, with the internship and have looked uh, uh, in other areas to apply their uh, their their skills training and uh, and their um, internship. People a lot of times talk about spin-off every time a job is created. Do you have any spin-off potential spin-off figures on what uh, this could bubble into? In, in, what, in terms of the announcement that we made today, yes. well, obviously, what what we're looking at doing when we talk about technology and innovation within the mining sector. I mean, North Bay is no better example. I would say, hey Jay, I mean this this. Uh, this city is uh, gaining a global reputation as doing something in, uh, in the service sector uh, of mining uh, and supply um, that a uh, few other towns and cities are able to, uh, uh, to do as successfully, if any. Um, that is the kind of uh, initiative that we want. That is a spin-off of the mining sector itself. Uh, infrastructure improvements, the highway between Sudbury uh, and North Bay, and in fact across this part of uh, Northern Ontario has improved the fortunes of towns and cities and will remain uh, committed, as I said, to those three fronts, uh, community economic development and infrastructure, uh, business growth and innovation, and of course economic development is initiatives that make sense. So you talk about good news, what are the challenges? Uh, what are the challenges? Well, I think the challenges continue to be to find the right kind of value added in the forestry or mining sectors um, that um, can help 
uh, communities be uh, more self-sustainable. We saw at the bottom of the recession out in northwestern Ontario, if I can use that as an example, uh, that there were very few uh, forestry operations going, but the ones that were, were value-added. They were making world-class pulp, uh, Weyerhaeuser, eye level of course, very much in the, in the value-added sector. Uh, that tells us now um, that our challenges moving forward are to invest in technology and innovation um, instead of just dusting off machines at a mill uh, or in the, in, the, in the mining sector as a boom comes on to simply produce raw materials uh, and resources that we need to invest in human resources and technology uh, so that people and the companies are inclined and incentivized to actually stay there uh, through the good times uh, and the bad times and we believe that moving forward that's, that's Absolutely. the approach we have to Absolutely. When uh, Sandvik closed down obviously that was a big hit to our community and uh, Joe Guido came to see me and said, Al, give me eight months and I will fill the place. I'll get it back up and running and create employment. And what we're hearing today through uh, FedNOR's partnership with, uh, uh, with Rotocan and with Joe Guido, this is good news for us. We're going to have 30 jobs. Joe has even gone on record to say, no, it's, it's closer to 70 jobs. They're already busy. He told me that they're trying to keep up. So absolutely it's good news for us. Uh, Joe is uh, a true champion in our community when it comes to manufacturing and creating jobs, good paying jobs. Uh, the minister was well spoken and, uh, and I can tell you we appreciate that type of support here in the city of North Bay. When you're looking at the, uh, the dollars being spread out across Northern Ontario, several million to the west of us, but 700,000, what do we do to, to, to get that ramped up a bit more? Well, obviously, we have to put uh, good applications forward. We need to work through our MP. Uh, we have to uh, engage our businesses to expand. And that's what we're trying to do with the airport and business park, is create the land so our businesses can start to expand. Here's a case where they were able to expand right within the city. But we need to create that infrastructure. And that's why we keep spending the money we do in the infrastructure to create these airport business parks, to create jobs and, and create economic development. And that's crucial to our success moving forward. You saw the uh, seven or eight uh, men and women that work at Rotocan here. You can imagine 70 more of those standing behind them. That is great news for the city of North Bay. But you know what? We're competing against every city in the world. We're in, we're in a global uh, competitive fight to bring jobs uh, to our community. And we have to bring our A game. And today, obviously, was our A game. You use the term good paying jobs. Um, how do you feel about I guess where the city is in terms of the supply of good paying jobs and how this contributes to it. You can never have enough good paying jobs, so uh, let's start there. Uh, and you know what, every job is valuable. You've got to understand that there's a lot of jobs that are entry level jobs that create the experience and knowledge for individuals so that they can keep moving up the ladder. There's students that need those type of jobs. There's youth that need those type of jobs. There's individuals that don't have any skill levels that need those type of jobs. So every job is cru cru crucial. The challenge is, obviously, how do we create even more wealth and better paying jobs? And we do that through light manufacturing, like what we heard today. We do that through aerospace industries. We do that through government jobs. So that is why, one, we have to fight for every job we have in government to retain it, but also create um, the environment that business and industry can succeed. And that's what we're hearing today. The minister spoke very passionately about Northern Ontario um, and the fact that he has confidence that we can play a global uh, uh, for we can be a global force on the in the uh, world place uh, uh, competition to bring jobs here and we're more than just about rocks and trees and obviously this is a mining announcement but we're also science and technology and aerospace industry and light manufacturing and that's where we need to focus and that's where we are focusing and then when you talk about science and technology those jobs usually require skills and then a lot of people talk about a skills gap how do we close that gap here Absolutely. You're, you're hearing that there's going to be five to 7,000 uh, uh, positions on field in the skilled side of things. We know that business and industry are going to go where the skilled people are and skilled people aren't going to go where the jobs are. And what we have here that sets us apart from a lot of cities in, in, uh, in, in the country is we have a college and university here. We have a college that is, is adjusting their, their programs to meet the demands of business and industry going forward so that their students can have great jobs. And our universities uh, trying to get engineering up and running. But we're very fortunate that we have those two institutions. But the minister um, today, I really like what he had to say. I really like the passion that he had and the confidence that he has in Northern Ontario. What are you doing different uh, with this project that is different from your other to projects? Totally, totally different mining uh, area. Uh, this is more into uh, 
uh, the exploration business, which is reverse circulation. Uh, we will be one of the only people in Canada that actually make reverse circulation tools. So what does that mean to the layman, reverse circulation? Uh, yeah. That's basically um, you're, you're sending water down and it's coming up through a center tube. That's they call it reverse circulation, where normally it would come on the outside of the tube. This one comes on the inside of the tube. So you're able to gather the, the stone that you're cutting and use it for exploration samples. And is that more uh, environmentally friendly or economic friendly or a combination of both? Uh, it, it, it's, it's an option to diamond drilling, where diamond drilling is very expensive to do. Uh, the reverse circulation is, is very common in other parts of the world other than uh, Ontario and Canada. Um, Australia, and South America are very uh, large on reverse circulation, so I want to take the opportunity to, uh, to, to get some of that niche market. And, and that means new jobs for, for North Northern Bay Ontario. and Northern Ontario. Yeah, I um, suspect that I'll, I'll probably have uh, 30 employees here within the next year to 16 months. And what kind of economic impact does this have for you so, and for the area? 30 well-paying jobs. I mean, at the end of the day, it's between 20 and $25 an hour. I mean, that, that feeds a, a few mouths, eh?